Hello everyone and Happy New Year to all. My name is Carlos Cuestas and I am an associate at Copperberg Center for the Arts at Queens College. I want to welcome you to another episode of the Music Makers Alumni Concert Series that features graduates from the Aaron Copland School of Music at Queens College. The Music Makers Alumni Series and all of our 2021-22 programming is proudly brought to you by our lead sponsor, the New York Community Bank, with additional support from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs and the Max and Selva Kofferberg Family Foundation. We thank our sponsors and we thank you for being here. Today, we bring you Aaron Copeland School of Music graduate, Victor Murillo. Victor is a touring artist, multi-instrumentalist, producer, composer, and educator based in both California and New York. He is known for his work as a bass player within the worlds of jazz and traditional song harojo. Victor takes both music internationally and also plays many other genres of music such as classical, R&B, funk, Caribbean, and South American folk. Victor studied composition for film at Berklee School of Music and then moved to New York City to get his master's degree in jazz at Queens College. He has shared the stage with the Boston Pops Orchestra, Paquito de Rivera, Winton Marsalis, Bob Minzer, and many more. Victor has also toured with Song Jarocho masters such as Senen Safarino, Patricio Hidalgo, and Laura Rebolloso. He worked as an assistant film composer at Black Boy Productions and has worked on Amazon and PBS original series. You can watch Victor touring internationally with the swing band The Hot Sardines and with various song harocho artists. Remember, after this show, Victor will be taking questions from the audience, so stay tuned and feel free to ask them on the comment section of your YouTube page. And to find out about our spring 2022 programming, please visit our website, www.cupforbearcenter.org for our social media channels for our exciting calendar of live music, conversations with authors, and much more. We thank you for joining us, and let's welcome Victor to our studio. Hey, Carlos. Victor, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Good, good. It's good to see you here. It's good to... Uh, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. It's good to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Of course, of course. So uh, before we get into your video, you want to just tell our audience a little bit of what they're about to experience and... Um, say something if I missed in your introduction or something? Sure, sure, definitely. Um, so I prepared for you guys, uh, along with the help with Cupperford Center for the Arts, uh, a show, a video production uh, I, that I did with using uh, multi-tracking and uh, video. And uh, it's basically, you're gonna see a lot of me playing a lot of different instruments <laughs> to sum it, to make it, e to uh, explain it easier. Uh, Son Jarocho, is a genre from Mexico. It's a it's a musical genre, um, as as well as a culture from the state of Veracruz, and this genre and culture has been influenced by has it has Andalusian, African, European, Baroque, and and American indigenous uh, traditional roots, and um, uh, traditionally it's played with a lot of different instruments. Uh, but so I managed to it, with my project I. I have I reduced the amount of instruments instead of 60 people that, <laughs> where normally you would have in a fandango, which is normally what where you would find this music is in a fandango, which is a communal gathering where people uh, get together, they eat food, they listen to music, they play games. Uh, musicians would gather around a tarima, which is a wooden platform where where people would go up and dance while the musicians are playing. And versadores, poets, would get together and they would recite uh, improvisational poetry in the spot. Beautiful, just beautiful mm. culture. Yeah, it's uh, really beautiful. Yeah. So um, why don't uh, we, we get started with some of the music? Um, yeah, I, I hope you enjoy the video that I made for you guys. Uh, like Carlos said earlier, stick around for the q and If you guys have any questions for me, uh, feel free to, to give them, you know, send them over here. Um, and yeah, any anything else, Carlos? No, no. Well, so just uh, cue us up to get into your video. All right, cool. Well, without further ado, hit it, Andres. <laughs> Hi, welcome. My name is Victor Murillo. This is my project, El La Sazon. Llevarme, pero no le 
concedió El diablo quiso llevarme pero no le concedió Porque la Virgen del Carmen con su manto me tapó Porque la Virgen del Carmen con su manto me tapó demonios han podido averiguar conmigo ni los demonios han podido averiguar porque cargo a San Antonio y a la Virgen de Pilar porque cargo a San Antonio y a la Virgen de Pilar Ay. que el diablo se la bailara que sufre, al diablo se la bailar a mitigar el que sufre cuando empiezas a patear todo empieza a oler a sufre cuando empiezas a patear todo empieza a oler a sufre Dios te salve, Ave María, Ave María, Dios te salve, Dios te salve, Ave María. Así gritaban las viejas cuando el diablo le salía, así gritaban las viejas cuando el diablo le salía. Para escaparme del mar, tuve que volverme al río, sin poder imaginar que el mar era destino mío. Aquí les va un balajú.
las ariles, ariles vengo diciendo, ábreme la puerta mi alma, no te me andes escondiendo. El amigo mono se cayó del palo y en el aire dijo, válgame San Pablo, que si no lo dice, se lo lleva el diablo. Aquí les va un canelo. Come up. 
Cómpreme chile habanero que deleita el paladar. Y si no tiene dinero, se lo voy a regalar. Pero pruébelo primero. Aquí les va unos chiles verdes. song is one of my favorites. Cuando yo lazo un turuno, lo lazo de traspalante. Y si me lo espanta alguno, dejo que corra un instante. Porque me gusta que eche humo 
la riata, la silla, el guante. Here is el toro sacamandú. Pajarito carpintero, si eres laudero de verdad, construyeme por piedad una jarana de cedro con cuerdas de libertad. Here is el pájaro carpintero, the woodpecker. Licencia. 
Aunque no tenga experiencia, yo lo hago con mucho esmero, porque cargo la paciencia del pájaro carpintero. Son is a project that I started because I wanted to play Son Jarocho uh, with some different elements, with something that was a little bit more of me. And I have a lot of experience playing jazz, playing symphonic stuff. I'm also an arranger, uh, film composer, and, and producer. So, you know, I wanted to use the tradition and kind of push it forward in, in my kind of style. And th that's basically what En La Sazón my project is about Cuando mi caballo bebe, mi morena echa un cantar Bebe caballito, bebe que está serena la mar No ha caído la aguanieve Aquí les va una aguanieve The Sleet This next song you guys are gonna recognize. It was covered by the great Richie Valens and it became world famous. Ay, arriba, y arriba. Arriba de tu balcón se divisa la luna. También el sol. Ay, arriba, y arriba. Yo no soy marinero. Soy capitán. 
aquí les va una bamba. for watching please follow me on all social media platforms i want to give a shout out to queens college and cupperberg center of the arts hasta luego nos vemos amigos Congratulations, man. That was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you like the process of recording? How do you how do you feel? Uh doing this, yeah. Uh it was uh just watching it again just kind of <laughs> brought me a little bit of anxiety again, not gonna lie. <laughs> just because uh yeah, it was a it's a um this new um thing, which mm -hmm. is the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of let let a lot of artists and musicians uh to just have to adapt to, yeah, um, since you know to the situation since we couldn't play mm -hmm. and one of the things that well i started doing i had to, been doing it a little bit before the pandemic but uh the pandemic really like made me just depend on it yeah. which was these kind of types of um recording and multi-tracking um most of the time I, uh, during the pandemic I, during the pandemic i was stuck in my apartment <laughs> mm, yeah uh, right. You know, Good like a lot, a lot of us yeah, yeah, for several months and, you know, we had to figure out that way to do it. And that, that was the way I, I basically got my stuff a little more out there and just kind of kept my inspiration and artistry, you know, strong um, and in yeah. one with myself. So, <laughs> but, you know, this doing this one, this last project was probably one of the most challenging because I um, I was I basically did everything. Um mm. So uh, from from the video editing to you know uh, to the music engineering part and and then being I had, I had five five or four hours in the studio and I had to do everything like one take. <laughs> wow! And wow. so yeah, so it was it was uh, challenging, but you know I feel like I like taking these kind of uh, 
opportunities to grow. Of course. Um, and you know, every time I, 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 I do something, I always, you know, I, I like to hear, get some feedback so I can learn, mm -hmm. you know, and, and keep growing my, my project, people who are listening, who like it, you know, um, I want to, please them at the end of the day. So, uh, of course, that's, yeah. that's what it's all about. Well, um, and we invite our audiences uh, to come and chat with us, join the chat. Uh, if you have any questions for Victor, please feel free to post them on your YouTube comment sections, just like this one from the next Festival of Emerging Artists. So the next Festival of Emerging Artists asks, this is a really lovely, versatile young artist. So curious about what appears to be an animal job. Is that common in Songha Roto or Fandango? Thanks. Yes, it is uh, very common in Songha Roto. You would find that in the Fandango. It's one of our uh, traditional percussion instruments. You can also, it, we're not the only uh, genre, or Songha Roto isn't the only genre that uses the donkey chow. We call it the quijada in Spanish, uh, the quijada de burro. Uh, you will also find this instrument in uh, Afro-Peruvian music as well. And uh, to be honest, that was the first time I ever saw the donkey jaw was in Afro-Peruvian music. And then when I started playing Son Jarocho, I realized that it was also part of the Jarocho history. Yeah. That's really, really cool. Uh, I just want to pull in some more uh, comments, uh, shout outs that you got through your performance. For instance, Yay. Eliana Mulling says, La Bamba Yay, is Eliana. my favorite song forever. Uh, isn't it all of us? Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Uh, and Arlene Abdelian, sorry if I'm uh, butchering your name, Arlene. Uh, what a great singer and musician. Oh. Chéverísimo. Yes, uh, gracias. gracias. Yeah, yeah, so that's fantastic. So again, we invite our audiences to come and participate and ask Victor any kind of question that you may have. Um, and so I wanted to like start sort of uh, thinking about your project, not, all, not only like how you recorded and how you felt, but in a way, uh, what was it that brought you to this genre of song Harocho that you that you were explaining at the beginning, right? So, you know, in in this particular sort of moment in your life, you come to New York. Uh, we'll talk about your uh, history a little bit, but specifically for this for this performance, uh, what brought you to song Harocho? Um. Well, uh, I first was introduced musically, like starting to play, you know, with Farocho musicians when I came to New York. Um, I had arrived, I arrived to New York. I moved to New York in 2014 and I had been here for about a year. I was, I was studying at Queens College and I was also hitting the jazz scene, playing a lot of jazz and jazz clubs. And, and, um, you know, there came a point where, where I, you know, I missed my family. I missed my culture. You know, I, I felt a little bit lonely being in the city. And I, you know, uh, I, f I figured out with time that I'm not alone with that feeling <laughs> with people that generally move to New York. You kind of get into that uh, the first year. So, you know, for Dia de los Muertos, November 2nd, uh, 2015, um, I, yeah, I just decided to get out and and do something more with my culture. And so I went to Terraza Siete, which is a, uh, a, a local New York uh, jazz club in Queens. And uh, I found these great Jarocho musicians. I, uh, th there was a trova trovador, a jaranero uh, by the name of Senen Seferino from Veracruz. And he was playing with the local Uh, Carana, uh, the local Jarocho group from New York called uh, Radio Jarocho. And so I went and I, and I sat down and I, the smell of tamales, you know, and champurrado, like the traditional food, Mexican food, just like brought me in. And I happened to just, just uh, sit down at, the, at this moment when Senen was, was reciting a poem. He was imp improvising a poem on the spot. And you can just feel the energy in the room. I was like, what's going on? And I just started listening and it engaged me immediately. And, you know, 15 minutes later, I just felt like tears come out of my eye. And, uh, and uh, ever since then, you know, I kind of, I kind of just, uh, I told myself like, wow, like I, that's, I want to be able to do that. You know, I've, I've, I spent a lot of time playing jazz, being very, very brainy, you know, like jazz, musical uh 
yeah, kind of brainy stuff. But like when I saw that and and I realized how powerful the word you know is and how powerful poetry and and when you mix it with music, you know, it's very strong and it just hits you right in the center of everything. And I just wanted to be a part of that. You know, I, I hadn't been around of that environment. And also the music, like the, the, this music is very inclusive. So as soon as I just started being curious, people were like, hey, yeah, come be part of this. And I just said, wow, it's amazing. Um, there tends to be a lot of other genres, a lot of genres out there that are little, ex- they seem exclusive, you know, but um, so, you know, I went up to Senen and I asked him if, um, you know, if you ever needed a bass player, because I was, I'm, I'm primarily a bass player, um, that he gave me a call. And then so he gave me a call, you know, and invited me to, to a little Fandango. And the rest is history. I started, you know, for since then, I started playing with him and, and Radio Jarocho uh, and, and um, for and Harana Beats for, for about like two years, two, three years after that. For And yeah, I mean, I my heart was sold to Son Jarocho after that. <laughs> yeah, well, I know too. It's uh, such a wonderful music, and you're like so very talented. Uh, with it. And we are in the business of anticipating audiences' questions because Nadal Casotello asked precisely oh. how did you start in the song Harocho genre. So I just wanted to acknowledge Nadalka's uh, question and again encourage our audiences to uh, sort of like please bring your comments and questions to Victor. Uh, about or about some Harocho uh, that we can sort of uh, keep the conversation going. So, uh, Victor, I wanted to sort of um, go back a little bit to like your personal history and your personal history with New York and and, and with Queens College. Um, so, yeah. you know, I was I was really wondering, and as this series of music makers goes on, uh, I really like to 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 find out a little bit more about our artist's sort of um, trajectory, right? So. In a way, you came to New York, you, you went to Queens College for, to the jazz program. But I'm very curious, though, that looking back at it, right, looking back at what you did mm-hmm. and, uh, and everything that you've been able to achieve, what advice would you give to Queens College music undergraduate at this point, or, or even graduate, right, because you, you came to the graduate program? So I don't want to dwell on mistakes. Like, that's why I didn't say, oh, what well, would you give do differently? Not really, right? Mm-hmm. It's just like for people out there, tuning in, hopefully, from the Aaron Culpin uh, School of Music. Um, what what would you, would you tell them? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't want to be all cheesy and everything, but really, for me, I mean, the core of everything is that the reason that I do that I do what I do is because I just, I love to play music. I don't see myself not playing music or writing music and to just keep it simple, that's like, just keep that love strong, you know, with that. And, and you know, and things will just lie, lie in front of you, you know. But I don't want, that's like the simple, simple thing. Uh, I, 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 with, 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 um, with Aaron Copeland School of Music, I learned so much, you know, and it was, it was just, it was an awesome experience because I, I was able to live in New York City and go to school at the same time. Most, most of my friends, um, you know, graduated from, from Berkeley or went from another school and just went straight to New York. And they, you know, they had to get a job and do all this, all this stuff. And, and they, it was a different, uh, you know, they, there were different, uh, 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 you know, just obstacles to, to, to do, you know, be able to play. But I was able to go to, I was going to school and studying with teachers, you know, playing and then asking my teachers questions about the scene and, and stuff like that. But, at, you know, throughout this whole time, I had been playing so on how to try and jazz. And and I I guess for uh, the advice that I would give is just, you know, use the elements that you, you're learning at the school and, and try to be innovative with it. And, um, you know, whether it, whether you decide to to stick to traditional jazz, whether you decide to stick to whatever genre it is, you know, um, I mean, for me, it's been very special to have discovered this genre because uh, it, it's very personal to me. And it's it's um, I feel very connected with it. And it seems like when I play it, it's exactly what I should be doing. And that's I feel like every artist and should should be doing that exactly you know should be fine we should all need, need we all need to find that thing that just feels right every time you do it 
And for me, it was Son Jarocho, you know, and j jazz music does as well. I mean, I'm not saying that like, uh, what, I, I love playing jazz. And for me, it's like when I play jazz, I'm, I'm working on this craft on this mastery. And I just, it's just this, um, it's like, fi you know, filing your knife as, you know, for a chef, you know, it's like, you're getting it just right. You're working on perfection. Then you use that to work on your craft. That is you, particularly you, because at the end of the day, people want to know who you are. Right. I, I, that's the way I feel. I was always scared, you know, I was, you know, thinking like, Oh, I'm not good enough. I need to practice harder. You know, um, I need to practice my skills. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't sound like Charlie Parker, you know, the bass or, but you know, the most important thing I feel is that you need to find your voice, whether it is in jazz or whether it is in whatever genre you're, you know, you feel that you are, most connected with you know at the core so i i kind of went very deep there but <laughs> did, did that answer your question um yeah i i think i think so but more than you know my question i feel like uh it's it's the energy that you put out there of, of your experience at acsm that i think is so contagious uh for people and i hope if there are any students here uh witnessing your your testimony if i will if i may um are, are inspired by what you're saying you know like Alina Lopez for instance uh, who says a QC graduate here a big fan of Victor he is such an amazing artist mm -hmm. so uh, um, Alina. reach out to Alina thank you for joining us um you, Alina. so I have one more question from the audience and I think it's going to tie nicely with what you've been talking about jazz the tools that you were learning and not given music students, you learn them, you don't get them. Um, <laughs> and yeah. and uh, I know you have an instrument or two behind you that we can oh. sort of like share with the audience. Yeah. So before you you grab them, uh, I want to tie together this idea of improvisation as something being, uh, you know, in, in North America, at least when the United States, we think about it as being jazz, right? Like, like improvisation sort of like it's tied to it. But John asks uh, a very interesting question here. Uh, and I wonder if by you answering it, you can also demonstrate a little bit if you, if you wouldn't mind. Mm, yes. So, so how important is improvisation in song Harucho in, in your experience? Very. <laughs> that's the one of the things that that great. I love that you brought this up because that's this is one of the things that immediately when I started playing song Harucho, I was like, wow, this is incredible because everything about it is improvised. So, um, and it's it's. I was able to connect in that way because I, I already played improvisational music with jazz. And so, you know, when I played, so, started playing Son Jarocho, you know, obviously the, you know, the rhythms and, and the harmony is very different. The whole concept's different, but it was all improvisational. So that's what kind of attracted me. So yeah, every time you play, it's something different. It's never the same. So um, for example, I have a, the requinto that you heard earlier. Um, and I'm going to come up with something on the spot. To the latitude, tune, but bear with me. Was that was that uh could you guys hear that well? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was that was really good. That was actually yeah. excellent. It sounded fantastic, man. Thank awesome. you. Yeah, thank so. you. So so you know, like interestingly enough, Song Harocho, the way I understood your your answer is like improvisation is key and is basically the most important skill, but also you also have to have a common language, mm -hmm. right? Of um of like 
I suppose melodies, right? Or or mm -hmm. or recognizable bits uh, for people. Um, and yeah, so you know, I, I think we're start we're going to start to wrap up. I think we're we're ready to start wrapping up. Okay. But I, I did want to ask you one last question about sort of the your experience in the song Harajo tradition, uh, like writ large, right? So. You're by coastal. You live in California. You also live in New York. Um, mm -hmm. Have you traveled to Mexico as well to to play San Jarocho? Yes, I have. Um, mm -hmm. I've I've been you know well I've been to played in Mexico City with the Jaraneros there. I've gone to Jalapa many times, mm -hmm. and I've, I was fortunate to go all the way to the south of Veracruz to right, Altipan right, right. and Chacalapa. And I've been able to, you know, I've been to a couple of fandangos down there as well. Mm. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I guess I, I, I'm asking you these questions because so, so we're talking about a genre that's like all over the world in a way, yeah. right? And, and yet there is, and, and there, there's improvisation, right? But then yeah. there is like a common sort of, I don't want to call it language, but yeah. let's call it language, let's call it language right? Um, so, so what's your vocabulary? Thank you. So, so what's been your experience about being, you know, having the opportunity to like be traveling so much and and, and always with your instruments uh, with you and, and connect with people immediately? Uh, and I kind of want to sort of, you know, yes, I'm sure there are differences, but what brings you guys together? Like you were, you know, the poetry. Is it uh, what is the poetry about? Like what what is it that you guys are are, are sort of bonding over? Well. Um, when I go and I, and I, and I, let's say I, I play, I go and invite, invite a friend to play, uh, you know, a jaranero, uh, it's my favorite to go to Mexico and play with like the great cats over there. because they're, they're so good. <laughs> and every time I go, I just learn new, new things. But, um, to me, I guess what, what I, what really connects me to immediately is the rhythm, you know, the rhythm uh for me it's just like it's it's where it's at you know if you notice a lot of these songs they tend to be one i mean two chords maybe three um the harmony is not that complicated but it's really not about the harmony that's a, you know it's about everything that happens around it and how you phrase all the all the things around what the harmony is giving you and the emphasis you know and all that stuff so i gotta say like yeah i mean uh what yeah i mean i bond with that rhythm and what is rhythm i mean rhythm is it, their frequencies their vibrations and and so i mean i it's hard to explain exactly what it is but it's but i you just feel it when you're there with somebody and you feel their vibration and sometimes their vibration is not that cool and it might not actually work out <laughs> you know it's just about like you know certain personalities don't work with certain other personalities you know and sometimes you just don't know why but they just are um so in in that sense i don't know if that answers your question but yeah i mean i feel like rhythm vibrations mm -hmm. um and whether that be with you know vibrations uh love with or food you know uh just this um the whole vibe of the place uh I, yeah. it's hard <laughs> well i mean I, I suppose it answers my question because it is your experience right so uh all right we have one last comment from john oh this is nice from john uh, my young daughters loved your music. They were Aww. dancing to the jawbone. That's the jawbone. So cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Quijada. The quijada. Right? Yes. Right. I, I wish I had that with me right now, but I don't. Oh. Know. Next time. But maybe I'll play mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give it a show. Let me let, 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 let us see it. Let us see it. It'll take <laughs> nada. It'll take a couple more years, John, for me to use my quijada. So. Oh. <laughs> oh well, Victor, it's been a fantastic, it's been a pleasure to to have you with us. Um, before we leave, though, I okay. wonder if you could like tell our audience where they can find your music, where they can find you, how how can they they can keep up with you? Sure. Uh, you can look me up firstly at victormurillomusic.com. And um, that's, I will, I always post up, you know, where I'm playing and new videos that I'm doing. Um, and you can find me on uh, Instagram as well. I, I usually post uh, stories and, and, um, and post of what I'm doing, some of my projects, you know, when I put, when I post things on Spotify, I usually put, put the link on there as well. And uh, you can find me on Facebook as well with Victor Murillo. Um, and uh, yeah. That's pretty much pre pretty much it. Yeah, stay tuned with uh, a lot of the stuff I'm doing. I'm working with several um, artists as well, producing music with uh, 
with a couple rappers. I just um, worked on a on a song with a with a rapper called Audrey Funk, and we we released a song called Larga Vida. You guys can check that out on Spotify. And I'm about to release a song with a great rapper as well, Rebecca Lane, in a couple in a couple months. So stay tuned for that. Very, very cool, Victor. Very cool. Congratulations again. And to all of our audiences, thank you for joining us. You can obviously find out about our upcoming season on www.cockferbirthcenter.org uh, and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, and yeah, uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Have a wonderful night and stay safe out there, everybody. Thanks, Carlos. Thanks, thank Kupferberg Center for the Arts. Have a good night, everyone. Good night.